Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 285 of the current situation. A shorter video today as I'm sure that everybody is eager to start their Christmas celebrations wherever you may be. Firstly, a big thanks to people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your name here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support as always. Now let's get into the news and it's been a difficult year for governments around the world. Here in Spain, the Sanchez government has had a pretty up and down year and we can see here that Pedro Sanchez will close 2020 with the self-evaluation of his own cabinet. The office of the president has worked on this task together with a group of independent experts made up of academics in the field of social sciences. So there we go, the Prime Minister here in Spain going to sit down and self-evaluate his first year in office here in Spain. As I said before, a bit of a difficult year for his government. And a lot of people around the country have been critical of Mr. Sanchez and his government for a lack of transparency. And according to one political scientist, Victor La Puente, Spanish politicians see transparency as a hindrance. The political scientist advocates law of direct access to public information instead of mediating bodies between citizens and the administration. On December the 10th, 2013, and in response to a social demand spurred by the economic crisis and corruption, Spain approved the law on transparency, access to public information and good governments, a milestone to reinforce the right of citizens to access to the activities of the administration, which had always been very opaque. Seven years later, the law has not fulfilled its objectives and knowing the activities of the different governments continues to be a Herculean task. And when asked the question, if in access to information Sweden is a 10, what score would Spain obtain? Mr. La Puente said a six is being very generous. So transparency is still a problem in Spain, even after passing that law back in 2013 to make the country more transparent, and the government seemingly still reluctant to share vital information with the public. But I'm sure this is a topic that will be addressed when the government self-evaluates itself next week. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, the COVID-19 vaccines have rolled out of warehouses in Belgium and are on their way to Spain. And the first vaccination against the coronavirus in Spain will be in a residence for the elderly in Guadalajara. More than 4.5 million doses of Pfizer's vaccine will be distributed to the whole of Spain. And the Madrid community will also begin to vaccinate this Sunday with the first 1,200 doses. The region will receive 48,750 units each week and the target population will be the largest in residences and social and health personnel. Now we saw in the video the other day how the city of Madrid is reactivating the riot squad to take care of illegal parties this Christmas. Also in Malaga they're going to be controlling on Christmas Eve and the Malaga police are reinforcing the surveillance of the curfew and clandestine parties. However agents recognise their limitations to control family dinners at homes although they will act upon request. Now let's have a look at the health situation in Spain. We can see that the risk level here says high, but that has been upgraded to extreme in the last few hours. The total amount of cases, the accumulated incidence rate in the last 14 days, 253. There have been 648 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are 11,328 COVID patients hospitalized, and there are 1,932 COVID patients in ICUs which is just over 20% of all ICUs in Spain. Now, it's probably a bit of an understatement to say that 2020 has been a bad year. Not many people were expecting the pandemic and the effect that it has had on countries around the world, but people are now looking to the future. And one Spanish economist has said what he thinks our world will be like after the coronavirus. We must rethink sectors, attitudes, and investments, says Professor Gaither Liebena. It is necessary to become aware of and adapt to the new economic environment due to the coronavirus crisis and digitalization warns Professor Gaither Levener. We must rethink social industry, explains the economist, the sectors most hit by the virus. But we have to look further and think about the training, the skills we have with overqualification and under ability to work. And all of this without forgetting the investment in technological capital. So we must become aware of and adapt to the new economic environment. Now, 2020 has also been a big year for the royal family here in Spain. We know that the former king was under pressure because of his dodgy finances, and that eventually led to him leaving the country. And this evening, the current king of Spain, King Felipe, is going to address the Spanish public with his traditional Christmas speech. According to one headline, the king will distance himself from the former king, Juan Carlos, and reaffirm the honesty of the crown. 
But another newspaper asked the question, should the king mention his father in the speech on Christmas Eve? So there we go, a big day for the king. Should he mention his father? Should he distance himself from his father? I don't know, but all I know is that I will be waiting for that speech with bated breath. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from recent videos. First one here from Mark regards the barbecue. I have to admit that I had a mind blowing experience in Australia with a Dutch oven buried in the ground. Fantastic. And being Dutch, strange that I never knew that there existed a Dutch oven. I was 20. Yeah, Mark, thanks for the comment. And good to see that you had a positive experience down under with a Dutch oven barbecue. To be honest, I'm not familiar with that technique, but I imagine that it also has something to do with slow cooking. But you also have to be careful when using the expression Dutch oven in Australia. I don't know if it's common in other English speaking countries. And if you don't know what it means, I'll let you guys look it up for yourselves on the internet. But all I'm going to say is that I had a mate who was an expert with Dutch ovens and he's not married anymore. One here from Tom, for most teaching posts, the academy will have a list of places rented by former teachers. This usually involves sharing a flat with other teachers, with each having a bedroom and sharing a kitchen and living room, often in a popular barrio in the centre of the city. With this as a base, you can look for other places, maybe a little outside the centre. Other than that, you can live quite economically in a pension for a while while you look around. This is what I did when I first came here. Madrid is the place to be when you start off, as this is the place where it's easiest to find work and normally pays better than it does in the provinces. Yeah, Tom, thanks for the comment and thanks for the advice. I know that there is a good network of teachers in places like Madrid that can help you find accommodation. Everybody seems to help each other out when it comes to this type of thing. I remember that I found a place to rent many years ago with the help of another English teacher. And I would also agree that Madrid is the place to start because you can find a lot of work in a city like Madrid. And once you get established, you can start to look around other places around the country, maybe somewhere a little bit more peaceful, a little bit more relaxing, and without the hustle and bustle of a big city like Madrid. One here from Scott. Hi, Stuart and all the watchers. I purchased my flat in Monforte del Cid, Alicante in January 2020 and not been back since. I work in pest control in London, UK. How easy or hard is it to get employment in Alicante in this field? I won't have any mortgage or rent to pay as it's all paid for, so I could take a modest salary. I can speak Spanish to get by and practicing three times a week. Your vids are really helpful. Yes, Scott, thanks for the comment. Sorry to see that you haven't been back to Spain since purchasing your house in Alicante, and I'm sure that you can't wait to get back and enjoy that part of the world. When it comes to working down there in Alicante in pest control, I've got no idea. But as usual, we'll open your comment and question up to the community, and I'm sure somebody can help you out and tell you if there is a need for pest controllers down there in the Alicante region. One here from Anna, you teach Australian English? Your accent, I mean. Yeah, no, thanks for the comment, and sorry if I got the intonation wrong there on your question. Not really sure if you mean it as an insult or a genuine question. Do I teach Australian English? Or you teach Australian English? But the answer is no, I teach English. Maybe I have a little bit of an Australian influence, especially when it comes to intonation, especially that intonation which goes up at the end of a statement. And with regard to my accent, yes, it is Australian, but it's not as strong as some of the other accents that you will hear if you travel to Australia. And finally, one here from Mike. Hope you and your family have a Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy new year. Regards from York. Yeah, Mike, thanks for the comment and thanks for the Christmas wishes. I also hope you have a good Christmas and a good new year. And I hope 2021 turns out to be a better year than 2020. And I say this to everybody out there. Merry Christmas, happy Christmas, happy holidays, happy, healthy new year. And thanks for all the Christmas wishes in the comment section over the last week or so. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. No video tomorrow. I'm going to take a day off. I'll see you on Saturday. Hasta luego. Feliz Navidad.